I already mentioned a few things about the U.S. Uh, coast. I said Pacific coast is predominantly a uh, primary coast, erosional coast, uh, whereas the Atlantic coast, East coast, is uh, got a lot of depositional features that we already looked at, barrier islands uh, and lagoons and so on running all the way up and down. So uh, the other thing you notice here is the uh, longshore currents are southward in both along both coasts because a lot of the storm energy is here and that energy creates uh, pressure gradients and sense of these longshore uh, currents. So uh, now you have to bring in your concepts from before about the uh, California current which is the cold southward eastern boundary current broad shallow not so fast whereas on the east coast you have the western boundary intensified gulf stream which is narrow fast deep and obviously those are not all the way to the coast right they are in the open ocean as you get on the shelf into the coast you have currents inside we will see a little bit later on that these pressure gradients uh, by various mechanisms can also create geostrophic current inside. You probably remember geostrophic, I hope. When you balance pressure gradients with Coriolis, you end up with geostrophic currents. So there are three coasts, the Atlantic coast, the Gulf coast, and the Pacific coast. And the average erosion per year is shown here. Pacific Coast is not uh, uh, very erosional because it's already eroded all the soft material and is left with rocky, rocky shores. Whereas the Hawaii is still eroding a little bit. Atlantic Coast is eroding almost uh, a 0.8 meters per year. 0.8 meters per year of coastal erosion. That's not small, right? So if you're building closer and closer to the coast, you have to be really, really aware of it. Plus, you have to remember Atlantic coast is a depositional coast. So barrier islands are going to be affected by this kind of a rate of erosion. And the Gulf Coast is the most uh, erosional coast with more than a meter minus 1.3, which means it's retreating at 1.3 meters per sec uh, year. That's quite a lot. And you have Alaska uh, way off on uh, the um, North Pacific uh, going at minus 2.4 meters per year. So you can see we have seen the uh, different tidal characteristics and spring tide ranges. So that's being shown here. And the average eros erosional or depositional rates are being shown here in different colors. And we already said erosion not so serious erosion and so on. Okay, those are the broad, broad, broad features. The Atlantic coast is quite open to uh, storms and wave attack, uh, hurricanes coming up and so on. Barrier islands are very common as we saw from Massachusetts all the way to Florida into the Gulf Coast. The bedrock is resistant uh, limestone. Limestone is calcium carbonate which means it's highly soluble in water. So places like Florida end up having what are called sinkholes. So there is a lot of uh, rain and water soaks in. Suddenly the calcium carbonate limestone can dissolve and you get boom, huge holes in the ground that gobble up homes, cars, roads, and so on. Northward through New Jersey is composed of early, easily erodible recent deposits and then glacier affected rocks. So remember I said the Pleistocene uh, glacier came all the way down to New York. So glacier erodes a lot of things, creates moraine, right? So we already talked about it. So New York through Maine was occupied by a glacier. So it has glacier affected rocks that are predominant features to the north. So strong storms, not just the hurricanes up to Florida and North Carolina, South Carolina, and so on, sometimes reaching all the way to Massachusetts or even Canadian border. Most of them go off into the ocean because the steering winds for the hurricanes take them off uh, the westerlies. Remember, the westerlies take them towards Europe. Uh, but there is other. There are other systems called nor'easters. Nor'easters that can form that form kind of a standing systems that can keep churning storm level winds, rain, snow, uh, hail, and so on. And they can generate 
um, storm waves of up to six meters. This is a very typical meteorological feature that happens off of the uh, Atlantic coast. We already looked at the uh, average erosional rate of uh, almost a meter per year. Sea is migrating inward, landward. Delaware, New York, and Georgia have a serious erosional problem. Uh, and the land that was under the glacier during the Ice Age obviously is rebounding, which means the land ahead of it down to Florida, Gulf of Mexico and so on, is subsiding because they were pushed up before. When the glacier is on, on Maine, Maine is sinking, but the land ahead of from Maryland, from New York down to Florida and the Gulf Coast would have risen. So Maine is rising and the other land is subsiding, which means sea level with respect to land is increasing south of Maryland, whereas it will be decreasing around Maine. So global warming has to account for land movement, isostatic adjustments, etc. as well. Right. So here are the barrier islands. Uh, drowned river valleys are common, which means when sea level was low, a lot of rivers were coming in and carving their own channels. Uh, because of the high uh, flow rates and so on. And when the sea level rises, they get drowned by the ocean water and they become drowned river valleys. So the Delaware Bay, Chesapeake Bay are the most famous drowned river valleys. And uh, maybe I'll stop this here and do the Gulf Coast and the other coasts uh, in another podcast. I'm trying to keep these between 5 to 10 minutes so that you can go through them quickly and watch them as many times as you want for making sure you understood it. But nonetheless, Atlantic Coast, the positional coast, different uh, erosion rate than the Pacific or the Gulf Coast, and um, different compositions of the coasts uh, along the way from the south to the north or north to south. Okay.